Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the School of Radiance podcast, the place to be for all things beauty and skin and rejuvenation and also becoming your most radiant version. This is going to be a bite-sized episode in theme with holiday get-togethers, gatherings, and dinners. Now, sometimes we have to engage with people that we don't have shared values and they very likely also don't have good boundaries. Now, what's really important to know is that for you listening, and I happen to know this because a lot of my one-on-one clients and podcast listeners are relatively intuitive and also relatively empathic, what we have to be aware of being intuitive empaths is that other people out there, especially narcissists, love our energy. And it's really important that we have up very well-established boundaries so that our energy doesn't get sucked out of us. Now, how do we do that? How do we do this in a social setting? One of the things I love to teach in the School of Radiance membership is conversational and dining etiquette. The membership is really where I take you on a deep dive behind the scenes with different technologies that I utilize for beauty and radiance, as well as deep dives on things like detoxing practices and really what does, does this radiant mindset look like? as well as other things. So if you haven't yet joined the School of Radiance membership, you are warmly invited. But in today's episode, this is a bite-sized snippet of a tactic that you can use at the dinner table. This is really important for you to utilize, especially if you are the host or the hostess at this event like say, for example, around the holidays, we're all eating great food together. In fact, right before recording this, I prepared an entire Thanksgiving dinner and really excited to enjoy that with loved ones later today. So say, for example, we are all sitting around the dining table and then somebody who has been drinking a little bit too much, they've been lapping up the vino, notice this and observe this because these individuals may be the people that you have to moderate. And I'm going to tell you about a really beautiful and gracious way to do just that. So if someone brings up politics, social justice issues, or finances, these are considered no-go at a respectable dining and social gathering with friends, family members, as well as professional colleagues. If someone starts to bring up these very controversial types of topics, kind of what they're doing is to look for other people around the table that also have shared values to them. So this is something that they're very likely unconsciously doing, but now you are aware of what they are unconsciously trying to do. They're trying to see around the table who is also in support of what they're doing. Psychologically, this runs very deep, especially in modern times. It's very important for you to be aware of this so that you can retain your radiance, not raise your blood pressure and not instigate cortisol dumping and fatigue your adrenals. So say, for example, someone brings up a topic that is just very uncouth at the social event where you're at and you're the host and hostess. It is actually your responsibility to switch the topic and reestablish the framework. So today it's all about being in gratitude. It's about being thankful for what we have in our lives, both, you know, physical, non-physical, your body, your health, the beautiful food that you're eating, the beautiful people that you're around. But in modern times or in hyper novel times, there's always something new that's grabbing people's attention, which I think at the end of the day is a distraction from you focusing on what is important for your health, your wellness, your family, your faith, and much more. So if someone brings up a topic that you're not keen on having discussed at the dinner, you've prepared a beautiful meal, you just want everybody to have a great time, if they throw out a question, I want you to just take a quick inventory around the table of how people are responding or also with what you're saying. If you notice signs of self-soothing, like fidgeting with the hair or the face, the nails, people rubbing their shoulders, these are actually signs of people feeling really uncomfortable. And notice if also you're saying something that is initiating this response in someone else as well. 
If someone brings up a topic you're not keen on having at the dinner table or at the social event, I recommend very gently using calibrated questions, including questions beginning with how or what. Now, say for example, someone brings up, what do you think of this latest social justice issue? Or, you know, this, what do you think of this in politics? What I want you to do is actually switch that framework and actually say something like, well, actually, I would love to hear what you are grateful for today. You have to use these calibrated questions in a very gentle way because they're actually taken straight out of the playbook of hostage negotiators. I love studying negotiation and I love when I'm learning about etiquette and dining etiquette, conversational etiquette, as well as negotiation, which has become something very handy to have in my back pocket. So that when I engage with someone where we don't have shared values, I don't want to waste my time and energy. I don't want to offend anybody because people, you know, it's hard for people to take a joke these days. <laughs> but what I want you to do is very gently use how or what questions to shift the energy, shift the dynamic, and bring it back to the framework of the intention of getting everybody together. So say if it's at a professional function, reestablish that framework, say, hey, what do you think about this event? What are you excited to learn? Okay. Now, again, these are nuances in conversation because if you go about using how or what questions in the wrong way, it's going to literally sound like you are in an interrogator. So follow it up with the how or what question to bring it back to the framework of the reason why everyone is together, the theme, for example, what you're excited to learn, and really do this in a gracious, gentle way with soft words and positive gestures in your face. Again, some type of micro gesture, like a warm smile, a gentle eye raise, signaling that you are excited to learn about the question that you just posed to this individual. This is a really delicate skill to master in conversation, but it is a surefire way to help preserve your energy. There are also some other sophisticated conversational tactics that I employ when I'm talking with someone to actually establish if there are some shared values. But people with scrambled values, a scrambled psychological state, and really bad boundaries, they don't care. They're going to blurt out whatever they feel like blurting out, especially if they've had a lot of alcohol. So in this bite-sized episode here on the School of Radiance podcast, this lends to a much deeper conversation and learning on really beautiful conversational etiquette, and how to leave a lasting impression. I also share a little bit of this in my Audible Radiance, the New Skin Science, which you're warmly invited to download over at the book page at theschoolofradiance.com. Let me know how these conversational dynamic shifters and calibrated questions go. It can take a little bit of getting used to, to not do it in an abrasive way where you actually sound like a negotiator, but to do it in a really soft, loving way will actually really preserve your energy and maintain the beautiful, positive vibe at the dining table and social or professional event that you are at. Have a beautiful high vibe rest of your day, everybody. Be grateful for what you have. Be grateful for the people that you love and the people that you're surrounded with. Notice who may be drinking a little too much around this time of year and how to preserve your energy in tricky conversations that can arise and how to gently shift that dynamic with calibrated questions. I'll see you again right here on the School of Radiance podcast.